Hello everyone, my name is Steph McLeod and welcome to a brand new podcast series, This Is My Story, This Is My Song. In this podcast, I'll be interviewing some amazing people about their life, ministry, songs and music and what it means to serve the church, especially during a season of lockdown and isolation. In this episode, I have the absolute privilege of interviewing none other than Keith Getty. Keith, together with his wife Kristen, are global ambassadors for modern hymns and leaders in the hymnody revival worldwide. Not only are they reintroducing the church to her musical heritage, they are providing this generation with robust and timeless songs like In Christ Alone, written with Stuart Townend, and The Power of the Cross. As modern hymn writers, it cannot be overstated the impact the Gettys have had on the world of music. So sit back, relax, and tune in, and I'll catch you at the end. Hi there, Keith. How you doing? Uh, welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm very grateful. Thank you very for thank you very much for being here. Uh, how you doing? Top form, Steph. It's, there's just an Irish sea between us. I'm across here on the very north coast of Ireland, where where the first Scottish migration came over, uh, just near Bush Mills. Um, so if I was actually ten minutes away today. I could actually have looked and seen Scotland from the window. Um, so uh, we're just 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 uh, just across the Irish Sea in, in the north coast of Ireland talking to you in Scotland. That's amazing. I was always told that uh, the Scottish actually migrated from Ireland. Is it the other way around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they came across here. And then, of course, the second famous migration was the, was the Scotch-Irish ma- mass migration to America. So probably a lot of your audience, if they have a, if they have a surname that's Scotch Irish, um, we're in either where you are or where I was. So if you're if you're watching on YouTube and you want to put a comment, tell us what your surname is and uh, tell us uh, tell us where you're from. But uh, I am my, my four grandparents were all Scottish names: Lennox, Burns, Irwin, Getty uh, are the four family names. And so we're, we 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 come come five generations back from Scotland, but we're in the north of Ireland here, north coast of Ireland. That's amazing. That's really good to know, man. I didn't. Uh, those are some very, very strong names. We're McLeod, which is one of the the top clans. Although we did uh, we did sort of run underneath the McDonalds, which is my grandmother's maiden name. They were good at stealing cows, like you know. <laughs> yeah, the McDonalds. Well, the McDonalds owned. They, they were Dunluce Loose Castle here, which is what right, right beside our home here, just li- literally down the street, which is which is what inspired uh, C.S. Lewis's Caraparavel in Narnia, uh, in the Narnia stories, and. Uh, but neither, I, I didn't know any McLeod except Murdo McLeod who played for Celtic in Scotland years ago at football, but that's entirely different. That's my dad's name. It's not the football player, but my dad's name's Murdo McLeod. Uh, oh, fantastic. Uh, he's, um, he's, uh, his first language is the Gaelic, and uh, I don't speak it fluently like he does, but... Uh, it's a gorgeous we, language. Aye, aye. We did, we, did, we, did a, we did the concert I was telling you about at, at Usher Hall, a couple of years ago, and we did we did a couple of our, our Sam, version of Psalm 130. I will wait for you. We do it with the Scottish Psalm, the Scottish Psalm tune as well. Uh, so we put the two together, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the the Scottish choir at the start sang in Gaelic with all the swells and all the other things that they do. And I wanted to cry, man. I just wanted to cry. It was the best song of the whole night. Oh, that's wonderful. I don't, don't, tell, don't tell John Piper; he was good too. But you know. But that was the best, and my wife. They, they were good. She was good as well. But but that was that was a real highlight that night. Amazing. So my, my family's from the Isle of Lewis, and uh, whenever we go up, we go to the church and they sing the the Gaelic psalm singing, which is you've never heard anything like it, man. You know, it's uh, still puts the hairs up, and it's all a cappella, it's, and it's just tremendous. Great. There's lots of it in this area. Lots of it in this little, little area. Every pretty much all the Presbyterian churches sang the Scottish Psalter, which is pretty incredible. Anyway. <sighs> So right. so, uh, I mean, how are you guys doing? I mean, lockdown over the last years uh, had a significant impact on everyone. And I mean, has it impacted your ministry? How are things? How have things been for you? Well, you know, for the most part, um, it's been a, it's been a special season for us. You know, we you know we have friends. M- many of our friends are are involved in in live music, live events, high street entrepreneurialism, restaurants you know, airlines and just because that's how our life has been and that's where our circles are. So we've known a lot of people with tragedy. We've also known people who have died. We know people who are still struggling for their lives. So it's been a very difficult season, um, whether whether in terms of, of health, whether in terms of finances 
or, or whether actually just in terms of mental health and relational strain. And uh, um, so, you know, our, our hearts go out to those people. For us as a family, it's actually been a pretty healthy season for us. The Lord has been kind to us uh, in terms of our own health. And uh, we, um, I guess there's been, it really has been in two parts. The first part was we kind of attacked it like we do as pr- professionally. And, uh, and uh, we said, what does this mean for us as musicians? And so we, you know, the, the, in the providence of the Lord, there was two, two, two things happened the first week that were pure chance, at least in human, the human sense of the word. One was this song that we had tried to release four times, but kept failing because it just didn't work called Christ or Hope and Life and Death finally came out the first week of lockdown. So to have a song like Christ or Hope and Life and Death, which you've so beautifully recorded and done this and brought a you know, fresh version to you, to have that come out the first week of lockdown was really poignant. And it was really interesting because I had an, an argument with the executives um, uh, uh, the month before because they wanted to call it Christ or Hope because apparently it doesn't, you know, if you put in the whole title, it doesn't quite fit under the page or under the streaming services. It's really awkward or something. I don't know. I don't know what the reason mm-hmm. was, but they wanted to call it Christ or Hope. And and I, I, I finally agreed with them. And then I went home and I couldn't sleep. And I was called, called them up and says, no, it's not happening. So I emailed all of them in the middle of the night and said, it's going to be called Christ or Hope and Life and Death. Don't even... Uh, no more arguments and and of course i didn't know there was a pandemic coming i didn't you know so but it's been really poignant that 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 hope and and to hear you sing it you know with, with the passion you did and and of course sandra joining in too sandra mccracken a good a good northern irish name at least um i'm sure she, i'm sure her family hailed from our, our part of the world as well mm-hmm. but um but that, that was really powerful the second thing that happened the first week of lockdown was my wife said, can we do some uh, on St. Patrick's Day, which is usually a day that Irish guys are, how do I say this, um, full of the joie de vivre, at least. You know, we're having a good time. You know, I was stuck inside with my family and I couldn't get out, you know, and I was like, uh, you know, I love having four daughters. I love having a wife. It's fantastic. But I actually want to go out and have fun. You know, Americans treat it. It's the one day Americans treat us like royalty, you know. And so I wanted to go out and have fun. With all my friends and they'd planned a party and stuff and so i was sitting in depressed and then Kristen goes let's <clears throat> let's maybe <clears throat> use this chance to teach the girls some of the great irish hymns because we've been teaching that we we sing a hymn each month with our girls at night time just to help them sleep and to, and to help them learn their faith through through songs and we've just done that since eliza was probably two years old and uh, so so Kristen says, let's do some of the Irish hymns. So we decided, and then she goes, in the middle of her, and she goes, I'm going to FaceTime the parents, the grandparents, and we're going to do it for them. And I went, that's good. Then by dinner time, over the pizza, Kristen goes, Kristen goes, I think we're just going to do a, fa- we're going to Facebook Live it. And I went, well, why would you do that? And she goes, I'm reading f- social media, and everyone was getting terrified. You know, everyone was terrified that third week in March last year. Mm-hmm. So we Facebook live it, and it, it had a massive response um, and in particular, Fox News National Television ran it all day Friday on the news all day, and so and so by the second week there was an audience of about just 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 over eight hundred and twenty thousand people watching this kind of weekly Facebook Live thing with basically Kristen singing hymns, me playing the piano, and my daughters climbing all over me and you know swinging from my ears and this kind of stuff. And so it was the least professional, most embarrassing thing I'd ever done. And of course, as chance would have it. Um, so, so that made us realize that <clears throat> a number of things. It it made us it made us lean in to the personal. It made us lean into the family, but it it helped us connect with people. And I guess that led that led to to, to restructuring the Sing Conference as Sing Global mm-hmm. as an online event. It led to Kristen doing the Even Song Project, which was really the hymns and songs that she wants to sing to her girls last thing at night, kind of taking that interpretation of Even Song. And it led us kind of really doubling down to working on, on the work of hymn writing, because although that's, you know, what brought us to the party, you know, at the start with In Christ Alone, and that was our passion of what we do, it's always the last thing I want to do because, because it's, hard, it's hard work. Hymn writing is for me. I don't know, maybe it's fun for you, but for me, it's 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 a hundred different demos of which 99 are failures, you know. And so that's been, you know, and I, 20 years on, I'm kind of I'm kind of tired of it, you know. And so it may, it focused me back into that. But if it if it's true in the if it's true in the professional sense of the word, and I, I hate to call him writing professional, that's but that's 
but it is the profession that is the work of my day in the same way as, uh, uh, you know, as a, 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 as a doctor or, or a bricklayer or anybody else or, or, or a working mother does their working day. Um, but if it's like that at the, at the professional level, so much even more is it at the personal level. And so Kristen and I, a few things happened and Kristen and I realized we need to get home. We just need to get out of here and take a sabbatical. We wrote In Christ Alone. We started writing hymns 20 years ago last year. And the, In Christ Alone was the first hymn that came out. And uh, it came out actually about Easter 20 years ago. So there's, a, you know, obviously integrity and capital are doing 20 year celebrations of the song this fall because it was released in America in the fall. But I felt it's time just to go home. It's time to go home and get a bit of, you know, Celtic truth in my, in my, in my, <laughs> in my bones and walk the beach every day for a few months. And so Kristen and I came home and we've been just focusing on, 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 I guess the internal things I would say to, to some degree. And, uh, in, in terms of our own spiritual lives or, or marriage, helping to raise our girls and, uh, just in, in a slower speed. And luckily with our organization, with the Getty Music Group, you know, two of our vice presidents really are, they're essentially acting chief executives. So they're running the whole thing in, in, in Nashville. And we're so thankful for that. And uh, so we get to have this season of space to breathe. So, so we're thankful. That's a very long winded answer, but we're thankful for what we're learning uh, for the space to, to, to be nourished. And also, I think the great thing for all of us is that coronavirus does allow us to step back. It does give us time and it does actually help us go, actually, what is actually important here? And whether that's at a professional level, whether that's at a personal level, whether that's in our marriages and with our children, um, or whether that's even considering Christ for the first time or actually making a decision. This is, this is a unique season for all of us uh, to form new resolutions, uh, which have got both you know, eternal and, and, and lifetime potential for change. Yep. Uh, that's, thank you so much for sharing. That's uh... There's so much in that, and, and I, I I relate to a lot of that. I think this this last year has been the most I've been home than I can absolutely remember. You know, so the time that I've got to spend and invest in my kids with the homeschooling, and also with my marriage. But um, uh, you spoke about mental health there. I found uh, 2020 to be quite difficult. Uh, you know, I, I have a a routine. I'm invested in the recovery community uh, here in Edinburgh, uh, and I do quite a bit of volunteering. And 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 suddenly to have that power of freedom taken away, I felt found myself quite powerless and and worrying quite a lot. And as you said, uh, I recently recorded uh, Christ Our Hope in Life and Death. Um, I cannot thank you enough for for that song. It is such a powerful declaration of truth, but it has helped me through so much in the last year we had um we nearly lost our son last june when he fell through a roof um when he was at work he's a he's a farmer and and he, he was so close to dying and and uh, we couldn't get to see him he's made a miraculous recovery we're so grateful um but he's uh, uh we, we had a couple of deaths in the family as well but like you know it was just the just the, the reality of of not being able to do anything and and I, I remember just walking around on a daily basis saying you know um uh, god is good god is good uh, where is his grace and, and and goodness known in our great redeemer's blood and it just became my daily prayer you know what i mean and which kept me grounded in faith and hopeful in christ and all things uh, and uh, you know it's been my honor and privilege to record uh, such an incredible song and i can't thank you enough um, I, I was wondering, just for our listeners, if, if you could tell us a little bit about the song. I mean, how did it come to be? Um, sure. would, would that be possible? No, absolutely. I mean, I was only a small part of it. There was um, uh, the the Gary Music Organization, where basically we basically do hymns. We, we only do one thing. We, we're, we're not good at anything else, literally anything else in the universe. And so we focus on modern hymns. But it's a group of guys and actually, they all wanted to come. They all wanted to come to the north coast of Ireland. I was saying, Are "You free for a writing session next week?" No, I, I just can't find two hours in my schedule. I said, "Another one? Could you maybe even fly into Nashville?" Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just tough this time of year. I said, "Okay, well, what about doing nine days in Ireland?" Oh, and miraculously, all their schedules opened up, and they were all happened to be free by the grace of God. And so, they all came over, and we worked in this song here in this very room that I'm in actually now, and. Uh, 
And so it was actually five of us, Matt Papa, Matt Boswell, Matt Merker, and Jordan Coughlin, just to, just to prove that we don't just sign guys whose, whose names are Matt. And, uh, <laughs> but it was a great, it was just a great, it was a great season. You know, it was great. Um, we, 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 wrote, we, it was a Matt, Matt Boswell is a pastor and he, he processes writing as pastoral ministry, studying the Bible, and then the hymn he wants for his people. And actually it was his son who couldn't sleep at night. And so he wrote it for him. Oh. And he wrote, so he wrote that. He, he took a, it's obviously it's, it's the Heidelberg Catechism, which is, you know, question, answer the whole way through. And that, and that, and then, uh, and then, uh, it was just da 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 was Matt Merker. And then, and, and then Jordan helped him with that. And then I said, guys, it needs to, because so I wrote the chorus. So sing hallelujah. So I wrote the chorus for them. And then, uh, and then, uh, Boz and then Papa sort of helped put it together. Mm-hmm. And Bo- Papa kind of sang it the first few times. So it was, it was the five of us together, just having fun. And, and constantly, I mean, the song had so many different versions. It's not even funny, you know? So that was kind of, that was kind of part of the, the almost the humor of it is, is it, it, it was so many rewrites and uh, we thought we were going to have it for the sing conference in 19 and <clears throat> it wasn't close to ready. We had to, we had to bail on that. They tried it in the fall. Had to bail again. Tried it in September once. Had to bail again. Then tried it in February. And finally recorded, and then and then luckily it just landed just as coronavirus was hitting the week of coronavirus. So that's amazing, and I, I can't stress enough how 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 much of an impact that uh, the song has had on on my on our lives. I, but it it just is tremendous. I remember recording it as well. Excuse me. <coughs> And I actually found it really challenging uh, because uh, I got the I got the the score, which is um, which was a piano score, and I remember reading the piano score and and um, uh, doing the the guide in the studio. So uh, because there was quite a few pages, and I'm I'm doing the guide with the vocals and the guitar together, but I'm reading the piano score, so I'm playing it quite contrapuntally, and uh, it, it was I found it I found it quite challenging, and I ended up having to record the the guide separately. Uh, and but when you hear the recording, uh, it 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 sounds so effortless. That there's some really interesting um, uh, time signatures in there as well. And and I, it's been a while since I found something uh, that challenging, but not in a difficult sense, but just in a recording sense. Um, but it is so well written and melodically beautiful, and the words are so deep. And meaningful that I absolutely love doing it, uh, but it was just such a privilege to record. So I just wanted to say thank you so much for that, and it's, it's just been wonderful. Um, and on that note, and uh, you know, singing, singing through lockdown has really helped me. And, and you spoke about live streaming as well. We did a little bit with that with with Celtic worship. I've also had a chance to read, and uh, there's 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 a few books which I I I can't get enough of. The one of them is Worship Matters by Bob Coughlin. I absolutely love that book, and and I've I've uh, been reading your um your your sing book as well, which is just an incredible resource, um uh, about you know why we should sing that be that we're created to sing. Uh, it's about how worship transforms your life, your family, and your church. And there's something for everybody in this book, um and I was really challenged actually as a as a worship leader, as a songwriter. There's some great tracks at the back. Uh, which which can also help people um, to engage and encourage the people that they're working with or the walk that they're on. Um, this is a brilliant book, uh, and I also listened to it on Audible, where where you guys narrated it as well. And uh, I can hear the passion behind your voice and and how you really feel so strongly about how singing can really change people. And I just wondered if you could uh, tell our listeners a little bit more about sing because I don't know if I could do it justice, man. <laughs> No, no, it's really just, I mean, I think what we found when we first came to America, what, what, when did you come to, when did you first go to America, Steph? Uh, to do music uh, was probably in 2015. Uh, I, I went on holiday, but I got to lead worship there. Uh, we visited in 05 and he moved over in 06. And I would, I would, because, because we're kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm not a singer. My wife's a singer, but my, our passion was to bring hymns to the world. And nobody was really taking it that seriously when we first did it. And so what we did was, if we did a concert somewhere, I did a free lunchtime for people, you know, for lead, for lunch, called lunchtime leaders, leadership, uh, uh, leadership lunches, basically. And 
a lot of the time they would they would refuse to do them. So I ended up having to pay for the lunches for people. But it was an amazing thing because you'd be doing this talk on on the importance of what we sing, and at the end of it, no, almost nobody ever asked a question. People ask questions about worship leading, about songwriting, about songs, about about how you put a service together, about you know recording equipment, audio equipment. Have you heard of this person here? Bloody, bloody, blah, blah, worship wars, whatever the question. Nobody was actually asking the question, how do we help our congregation sing? And, and that is the goal. You know, the picture of heaven, of every tribe, tongue, and nation singing to our creator and redeemer forever. The foretaste of that is God's people gathered together on a Sunday singing. Or, or God's people gathered together anywhere with my kids last thing at night uh, uh, singing, you know, uh, singing, singing simple hymns, singing for the beauty of the earth, singing Jesus Christ has risen today, whatever it is. That, that is the beauty of it. It's not a worship leader at the front. It's God's people singing. And so I felt the, 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 the argument and the conversation had almost moved away from that, almost, almost like the high church and, and Catholicism before it had done, where it had taken, this, the, taken away God's people singing as being the central conversation. And so this is what this book was about. It was saying, why do we, it's two questions. Why do we sing? And then what happens when we sing? So why do we sing? Well, God is, God commands us to sing. It's the second most com common command in scripture. It's obviously very important to God. If he keeps repeating it, you know, if you're repeating to your son the same thing multiple times, he knows not to mess with you. Do you know what I mean? Uh, secondly, we're, we're created to sing. Thirdly, uh, the gospel, the beautiful gospel of Jesus. Uh, but when we, when we think about that, how can we keep from singing? So that, that's the first bit. And then the second bit is that how does it change our lives? And that, I think that's so important to consider as well. How does it change us as individuals? Because if 20% of the Bible is songs, it's obviously very important to our, our, our spiritual growth. Secondly, how does it change our families? How does it change our marriages and our kids? Absolutely nobody, absolutely nobody has any business being at the front of a church, worship leading on a Sunday, if they're not, first of all, filling their own homes with the songs of the Lord. That's where it begins. Then thirdly, um, how do we help our congregation sing? How do we help every single person in our congregation, whether they're an unemotional accountant who can't sing in tune, or whether they're the, the most unemotional female who has got her hands in the air singing opera, even when she's doing the laundry. It doesn't matter what your personality is. It's how do we get everybody singing together? And then fourthly, the radical witness of God's people singing, because obviously, you know, where two or three are gathered, um, the Jewish people like that would have understood that that's a legal term. It's, it, is, it is bearing witness to what we know. And of course, all of us, when we sing, are a witness. It's not, some people say, sing up, you might be a witness. No, you're actually always a witness. You're always a witness that this is the most important thing in your life or it isn't. You know what I mean? So, so that, that's really the two sections of the book. And then we did, because, because, um, because I was in the Nashville scene, you know, and people have been doing all these little bonus tracks with how I grew up in music. I thought we did a few bonus tracks at the end. So if you're a parent or if you're a worship leader or if you're a hymn writer, or whatever it is, we do little bonus tracks at the end to get, to get you going. Well, that, th those bonus tracks were just golden, man. I mean, it, it it really helped me, and th th there was a few times in the book where I actually had to stop and think, man, that is a really powerful th statement, and I and I, I had to take some real time to evaluate that in my own life as well. You know, um, you know, what am I doing to encourage the people in the worship community that I'm engaged with? Uh, the songs that I'm choosing to sing, um, are, are they? given enough theological depth and content and truth to the to the the, the congregations that I'm serving um, as a father and this is what I was going to ask you next was you know how how am I cultivating an, an environment where my kids know the, know, know the joy of singing you know they know the joy because because my, I, my kids love music they love music and they hear me singing and they, they hear me playing the guitar and they hear me singing worship and we have worship on in, in the kitchen or or on the tv on the sunday at the moment um but when 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 i try and engage with them and ask them to sing along they're quite shy about it you know what i mean and, and and after reading your book i was like this is my responsibility this is my responsibility to to cultivate this environment where they feel comfortable 
Um, cause, cause my kids are comfortable talking about their emotions and they're comfortable coming to me to tell me about their struggles and stuff like that. They should feel and know the joy and also understand why we sing. Uh, I think, uh, um, Christine actually spoke about, um, you know, it's, it's great when they ask questions like, you know, when with the ransomed in glory, mum and dad, what does that mean? You know, uh, yeah. and, 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 and to have these conversations, I mean, I I would love my kids to come and ask me about this, but it's not going to happen unless I'm teaching them songs that that is going to impact them for the rest of their life and learn songs for when they're getting old. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's really challenged me. We've we, we've started this amazing journey where they've got a couple of guitars. I'm teaching them how to play guitars now, and they're singing regularly. Right. And it's it's just honestly, I, I love this book, man. It is absolutely oh, fantastic. Thanks, and oh, uh, that's very kind. You know, it's that. I really do think, you know, and certainly while coronavirus is still on, all of us have got this unique window in life to really sort this out. And, uh, you know, I, worship begins with the individual. People, in the, it begins with the individual before before it goes to the church. And I, but they forget, often forget this middle part that actually your family have to see you doing that. And then it begins with people who love the Lord. You know, I mean, your kids, your kids, when they cut a cup when Scotland play England at rugby, you know, your kids supported Scotland first, not because they knew the history of Hadrian's Wall and Mary Queen of Scots or the Scottish Parliament, but it's because they saw you screaming at the television wanting Scotland to win. And dad loved it, so they love it. Do you know what I mean? And that's and so, you know, it, it's an amazing thing. If you look in your churches at dads who are who are tepid during worship, the number of sons who are believers is minuscule. I hate to do that sort of stat thing, but I'm just throwing it out there because it's true. Do you know what I mean? You know, and uh, you know, if if dad if dads are standing up and singing with all their heart uh, to 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 the Lord of their life, to the Lord of creation, the Lord of their salvation, then you know families are much more likely to follow by by the grace of God. And, and of course, it has to be singing with a life that's matched. It can't be somebody who sings really passionately, and then they're like they're completely anti-christian the rest of the time i can't say we don't love their children at all but but it begins with that but then but then establishing these habits in your home i mean you're obviously very innovative getting the guitars going i mean it can be as simple as just it can be as simple as just making sure that the iphone is playing songs of the lord some of the time or each day or regularly do you know what i mean because the fact of the matter is everybody has a song you know everyone's listening to songs and everyone's emotions and passion and heart and soul is being caught up in those songs. So if we're not going to make sure that that Christian songs are at the core of it, um, and that's not to say enjoy music. We in our house we enjoy every kind of music, and but 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 Christian songs need to be at the core of that. And uh, and of course, you know, we I mean we we listen to the Frozen soundtrack with our girls. Then we discuss why it's a great song and why it's actually a load of nonsense. Do you know what I mean? So we actually, we have the conversation so that our, our girls, our five-year-old knows we're having this conversation. She actually can explain to me why So Frozen doesn't make sense theologically, but she still loves to sing the songs. Do you know what I mean? So I, I'm not sort of getting sort of weird or ab, 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 being sort of abstentionist and people, but 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 we we, we, we fill our homes and, and, then, and then we sing, you know, and we, you know, we, we, we you know, we, like for us, for your your family, your kids are obviously into playing the guitar, and they're a bit older. Ours ours have got into playing in the last two years, but for ours, it's been nighttime. You know, little kids singing at nighttime, and then that and and the gold that that, that has been. And as I say, as I said earlier, Kristen Kristen loves to sit with them. I'm kind of more okay, kids, shut up. Okay, we're going to sing the song, then you're going to go to sleep. I'm tired. Do you know what I mean? But Kristen is much more. She sits on the floor with them, and they'll work out. They'll work out. You know, we were doing Matt, Mer Matt Papa's song, you know, Mer His Mercy is More, Stronger Than Darkness, New Every Morn. So the girls sat and talked about it for five minutes about why they're scared of the dark, what they think in the dark, which scares them. Then she talked about what they were most looking forward to coming down the stairs tomorrow morning. Then she explained Stronger Than Darkness, New Every Morn. Do you know what I mean? You know, the, the mercy of the Lord. And so, you know, it, it's, been, it's been great for us as a family. That's just wonderful, man. And, uh, I, I I remember saying to my friend uh, Nathan Jess, another wonderful Northern Irishman, um, you know, there's something about singing. I, the, I, I don't think I've ever felt freer than when I'm worshipping the Lord and I'm singing. I, I, when I grew up, my dad had a guitar. I don't come from a musical family. I don't come from a church family, but nobody sings in my family at all. 
and mm -hmm. uh, but my dad had a guitar and I didn't have a problem actually picking it up and learning from it uh, but when it came to singing I was so shy and you know I, that didn't make sense to me until I read that in your book because there wasn't an environment where it was comfortable you know growing up so it has challenged me as a father uh, and, and knowing that my first ministry is at home, that in order to cultivate this environment where my kids are going to understand the freedom of singing and coming to our Lord in song and understanding why we sing and that we were created to sing, I need to create that environment and cultivate it in a way that my family know that it's a family value. So I, I, as a father and as a brother, I just want to thank you so much for that. Um, Thanks, man. That's good. Oh, no, it's 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 brilliant, man. Um, so I wanted to have a bit of fun and ask you, like, um, you know, if, if, if you could somehow send a message to your younger self uh, as you were about to embark on a life of music ministry, what what advice would you give you? Oh, man. If it was one sentence, probably pray more and shut up. Um, That's good advice. Uh, yeah, I think if, if, uh, that, that would be some reason well. But um, if I could do the last 20 years, I would, I would focus more on the internal things and less on the external. I, I, I'm, although I don't have your skill of singing, I am very extrovert in personality, and I have, enjoy, I enjoy and am stimulated by the, the, the energy of being with people and concerts and ideas and trying the next thing, and, uh, but um, I just think the importance of of doing the basics well, of loving the Lord with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, prioritizing our prayer, prioritizing our marriages prioritizing our daughters or children, prioritizing our local church and being stuck in our local church and uh, doing the basic things. Well, it's still the things I, I, I find hardest, you know, it's, you know, I, you know, I, my wife went and reorganized her entire morning so that I could do my two hours of writing this morning. And I still find something else to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know that. And, you know, and uh, so, so I think it's, it's trying to do those things well, uh, and obviously, obviously being quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry. <laughs> yeah, I know these, I know these truths as well, and uh, but no, but I think that's great advice. I, I, the hardest relationship I've ever had to develop is the one that I have with myself. Um, I'm pretty good at chatting with other people. I, I, I work with other guys in recovery that are seeking recovery. Um, and the th the thing I love about recovery as well is is and serving in recovery is is the paradoxical uh, blessing that you get that when you serve others, the and you pour love forward, you seem to reciprocate this love and and your self esteem automatically rises. I've learned that through my my journey with uh, um, mental health and recovering from um, uh, trauma as well from my my, my younger years and homelessness, um, but uh, singing. Uh, has had a massive impact on uh, mental health for me as well because when I started writing songs and started singing songs in my 20s I realised that it was a way for me to, to begin to process how I was doing because um, in Scotland, especially for men, we, we live in a sort of counter-cultural society where we, we're not allowed to get emotional at all unless we're at the rugby or the football, you know, where it's permitted to get emotional, you know what I mean? But but singing for me has allowed me to process how I'm doing both spiritually, emotionally and uh and and, and kind of understand who I am. Do you, do, you, do you think there's any truth to that in your life? Do you, do you, do you think um, um, singing is important for people's mental health, especially in the last 12 months um, where people can't get into congregations and they're, they're joining church through the wonders of technology? Um, do, you th do you think singing is, is just as important now that we've not been able to connect? Well, of course it is. It's, I mean, it's important. I remember, I remember talking to a fellow, Scott Alistair Begg, once and asking him, how do you deal with going for public ministry and realizing your own, your own bad attitude. Like if you're on a tour or something, you arrive in the city and he says, lock yourself. He told me one night he goes, Keith, you need to lock yourself in your car. You need to drive around and sing yourself hot. And he just meant just sing to the Lord and, and you will, and, and, and until you do it, it's, a, it's actually, a, it's actually, a, it's actually something that actually the Elam Pentecostals actually very articulate it very well. They sing themselves hot, which is why they just keep singing at the start of a service, you know, and, and nonstop, very, very different tradition to mine. But 
but um you know I, I, so i i think it's important for us i think it's it's this is important for our our, our families no i mean i think honestly i think this season you know it's, it's so funny i teach charlotte my second daughter, i teach her the violin and uh i think it was the third week of lockdown she was beginning to make some progress in the violin she'd been mainly through boredom for three weeks she started to play and really as she realized she was musical and uh her her bow and her violin broke and i had to order a new one and of course everything was slow at the time and said it'll take a week and a half so i was devastated because we'd finally made some progress with her typical number two child and then we, it's going to cut off and actually what we did for a week and a half was we pizzicatoed and so she really got her left hand going and that's when she really got her fingers moving and, and when the bow came back she played much better and it actually helped and I think in some ways, lockdown is like that, especially for those of us who can't go to church at the minute, in that, in that we need to fill our own minds with songs of the Lord. We need to be singing to ourselves. We need to be singing in our families, filling our homes with songs of the Lord so that they're there. And then I think when we go back into churches, that will explode. If you're a worship leader, make sure the songs you're singing on Sunday, you're sharing with your congregation earlier in the week, if you can, so that they can be listening to those songs on a Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. If there's 50 hymns you want your congregation and those young kids sitting in your church to grow old with, make a Spotify playlist for your people. Love them enough to give them this stuff so that what's happening in the previous six days of the week, then on a Sunday, it's just a natural expression. My wife, my wife always says, you know, Sunday worship is something that is savored in a Sunday, but it's prepared all week. Uh, and so, so these kind of things, I think this season, and the same as my little daughter's little season without a bow helped her pizzicato and pluck and, and and become a better violinist i think all of us all of us in our families all of us as we organize our churches as worship leaders can actually really use this season to become so much stronger you know and uh, i should also say you mentioned to me what would i tell my younger self as a worship leader well when i started writing hymns i wasn't married and, and i would say if you're not married if you're not married find the right person to marry because, uh, because it, you know, people, young, young writers especially, always say, you know, they, they believe this kind of, they believe this kind of therapeutic thing. You can be anybody you want to be. You've, you've got it all in your own part to do that. And you only become so much of what you want to be once you're married to somebody. You know what I mean? And so choose well who you marry and invest in your marriage above all things. You know, I, I, we are living at an executive level and, uh, amongst a number of partner organizations that that, that, that I work with, uh, I'm the president of ours and talking about six others at the minute. And the damage that is done by people who didn't guard their home and guard their marriages and love their wife to pieces. Do you know what I mean? And uh, as fun as it is standing in stage, it's you've still got to make sure it's even more fun to be with your wife. That's a bit of an oversimplistic way to put it, you know, but but make sure that you that you choose wisely who you marry. And secondly, that you invest in that above all else and, and pray and pray to them as well. Pray with them, pray to them. Pray, no, don't pray to them. That'd be a bad idea. But pray, <laughs> pray with them, you know, pray with them. My wife and everybody finds their own rhythm. My wife and I struggled with it for years. And eventually my wife said to me one day, you know, Keith, see, listening to your extrovert personality and loud booming voice early in the morning when you're at your happiest and I've just had three coffees. She goes, it drives me crazy would you mind texting me your prayers? And so about, I think four years ago, now, I started to every day write out my journal, my prayers, and then I texted them to her. And then she just texted me back, usually, thank you, prayed for you, bam. Do you know what I mean? But that connection of her knowing everything I'm praying for her before she wakens up every day, do you know what I mean? Actually unified our marriage after 10 years of trying so hard and constantly falling off the wagon, so to speak, and trying to pray together, you know? So, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, sorry to jump, jump questions, but that's just right. as, I, as I was thinking of the next question, I actually thought back to it. And uh, that's one thing we've learned and, uh, and continue to learn. And in this sabbatical year, in this lockdown year, you know, I think the Lord is not always in the easiest ways, mind you, but the Lord has, you know, helped strengthen our marriage. Oh, it's wonderful. It's um, I, I, I married my my Jane. Uh, I I saw I saw in her how much she loved God, and I'd never seen that in anyone before. And I fell in love with her love for God and uh, our friendship and um, 
our love uh, was was born out of that, and and she used to send me scripture every day, and and uh, she still sends me scripture and prayers and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's wonderful advice. So th- uh, thank you so much, and. I, I guess I just wanted to finish off by asking you, like, you know, what's next on the horizon for Getty Music with um, with with lockdown, the, the 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 light at the end of the tunnel, maybe a wee bit far away, but it is there. We've or so we've been told. Um, what's next on the cards for you guys? Well, at the minute, obviously, we're working. We're working on our own little hit, the sing, sing hymn note of that our whole team of writers are putting together. So that's that's the long term project, which comes out in twenty twenty four, and that's that, that's what really we're, we're focus on a lot of the time um and then and then um um sing sing this year is is, is year five uh, where we're looking at the great the great hymns of history and and everybody from gosh john piper and alistair Begg to johnny erickson tata to city of light to chris tomlin to our writers everybody joining in for that and you can you can either you can either watch that online as part of the sing global community or, or, or we're going to have a special way for you to come to Nashville, God willing, and that as well. So those things we're excited about. And then um, with my girls, this week we're doing a, we were here doing a documentary, doing a number of pieces with us this year while we're home. And then uh, and then we've got a first anniversary of our St. Patrick's Hymn Sing. So my girls, we're going to Down Patrick uh, to visit uh, visit the place that Patrick walked uh, and record a few songs Amazing. this week, which, which is going to be fun. Uh, and then Ireland plays Colin at Rugby. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one, mate. I'll be thinking of you, you know. <laughs> well, um, listen, I, I just want to finish like by, by saying, one, thank you so much for your time. I uh, appreciate you so much and your gifting. Uh, I, I, I'd sing with a, a ministry called Celtic Worship, and uh, we recorded uh, a couple of years ago uh, your hymn in Christ alone. And uh, we are inundated with messages on how that hymn is transforming lives and keeping keeping people rooted in Christ from all over the world. It is a firm favourite on our YouTube channel. I also want to thank you for uh, your your song "Christ Our Hope in Life and Death" and and the, the, the numerous other hymns that you've oh, given to the church. Them. It's, it's great. Oh, it was such a privilege, man. I mean, it really was not just as a as a worship leader, but as a, as a as a man and as a human being. I went through some stuff last year. It it is it was just monumental in my life, and and I want to thank you for that. Um, and uh, I I really enjoyed looking at your website and and going through the songs, and I love the way that you describe the songs and where they've they've come out of, and and it's so in depth, and it re- there's this real um sense that you you just serve with such a serving heart, you know, which just uh, reminds me so much of Christ's ministry, you know, how he just 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 wanted to give to the people. And I just wanted to thank you for your heart as well. Um, uh, if people want to connect with uh, Getty Music, what's the best way they can do that? No, um, uh, gosh, uh, gettymusic.com mm-hmm. would be the, it's the website and the Facebook. And we're, and we're, uh, as of about two weeks from now, we're going to have a very active YouTube, YouTube site. So we do do some stuff on YouTube, but we're looking to grow that. And do some more fun things with that, or or if you want to get more involved, um, do come to Sing Global uh, this September. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, listen, Keith, thank you so much. Please thank your 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 lovely wife for for allowing uh, this time as well. When your house, I know things will probably be busy with the kids as we are as well. So, thanks very much, and have a great day and good luck with the rugby, brother. Well, thanks, Steph. Thanks for tuning in today. What a great podcast. I loved hearing from Keith. Please do go and explore gettymusic.com, which is a fantastic website where you can access more information on Keith and Kristen Getty and their ministry. You can also find out more information about the Sing Global Conference, as well as their online store, where you can get a hold of their music, DVDs and books, which includes the amazing Sing book that Keith and I spoke about today. You can also listen to Getty Music on Spotify and all other major online streaming platforms. If you'd like to listen to my new EP, O Perfect Father, which includes my version of Christ Our Hope and Life and Death, featuring Sandra McCracken and written by Keith Getty, you can find it on Spotify and Apple Music, etc. Just search Steph McLeod and be sure to follow my profile for any updates and new music releases. It's been wonderful to have you with us on the podcast today and I look forward to the next time. God bless.